Last fall when I first started getting sick, I just thought that I was like any busy mom, just tired from the day at work and running the kids around. At the end of every day, I'd kind of collapse on the couch. I believe that I contracted Lyme disease at the Twilligeroff Leash Park. Last September, it was a gorgeous month, and at least five times a week, I would come home from work, grab the dog, and her and I would go down to the off-leash. I was taking that time to just kind of get back to nature and clear my head. Lyme disease was not on my radar. I was getting out of the shower, and I happened to glance into the mirror, and I saw this mark on the back of my leg. I called my husband over, and he was the first one that said, oh my gosh, it looks like a bullseye. The next day, I looked at the, at the bullseye, and it had morphed into a welt that covered the entire back of my leg and wrapped around the sides of my leg. And at this point, I was feeling much sicker as well. Luckily for me, my mother is a nurse from Southern Alberta, and I showed her this welt, and the first thing out of her mouth was, oh my gosh, do you have Lyme disease? I looked at the back of her leg, and I knew that it wasn't a boil, and I thought it could be a tick bite. I said, you have to go to the Medi Center, and uh, she didn't want to, and I said, you know, Lisa, it could be something like Lyme disease. When I walked into the Medi Center office and I showed this young doctor my welt, her face just dropped. I said to her, could I have Lyme disease? And uh, she goes, she looked back at me and she said, well, yeah, I suppose you could. I'll get you the drugs for that. I think she brought me a prescription for a week or 10 days. And I thought, oh, good, well, I'll, I'll get this Lyme disease over with and I'll be fine. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of the journey. I first started just feeling tired, and then like I had the flu, so it was my joints were achy. Then I started to get this weird tingling sensation in my face, and I was having trouble, not trouble breathing, but it was kind of like I would kind of gulp for air. I was definitely worried, and I could see her going downhill right before my eyes, like she just wasn't herself. I started getting stabbing pains in my, my muscles. It was like a blood clot was bursting inside of my muscle. That's what it felt like. Or I was being electrocuted or stabbed. Sometimes she looked pretty normal. In fact, sometimes they would come over here and she seemed really normal and then would crash, absolutely crash. There were days when I would go over there, day after day after day, and she would be laying on the Chesterfield with a blanket over her head. The next doctor that I saw was a replacement for my normal doctor. She saw the, the welt and she saw how sick I was, and so she was very supportive. After about a month of treatment, she phoned my house and uh, she was very, very hostile. There's no excuse for you not to be feeling better. You've had a month of antibiotics that I'm writing on your file that I've told you you cannot have any more antibiotics. So I tried going to my husband's doctor and at first he too was really supportive and I remember just leaving and just going, oh, I've got an advocate, I've got somebody on my side. And the next appointment again was completely different. He said to me, you look great, you can't be sick. He said, Lyme patients are militant. He said to me, you just want more antibiotics. And he said to me, you're manifesting your symptoms because you're reading about the Lyme disease. And I'm an educated professional person. You know, I took great offense to being essentially called crazy. So they said, no, you can't have Lyme disease. It doesn't exist in Alberta. It was very frustrating to see that the doctors just weren't interested. Um, we, they said, we don't have Lyme disease in Alberta, so therefore it's not Lyme disease. It was that desperate feeling all the time, thinking, you know, maybe the doctors know what they're talking about, but what if they don't? It took me a long time to start feeling better, certainly longer than the 21 days of antibiotics that is currently given um, to most Lyme patients. I found a doctor in Calgary um, that um, saved my life. If my daughter hadn't been so persistent after all the rejection, who knows where she'd be at now. I decided to share my story because I'm better. I'm going to be able to walk away from this disease, I, I hope. And there are so many people in Alberta and across Canada that are not. A powerful story, and we will hear from Alberta's top doctor in a moment. But first, we're joined by Susan McGinnis, president of the Lyme Disease Association of Alberta. Good evening, Susan. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Michael. Thank you for having me. All right. What, what moves you most 
about Lisa Robertson's story? Um, it's, a, it's a really touching story um, and unfortunately it's something um, that's happening at an alarming rate with Albertans. I can relate to it a lot myself having suffered from the, the disease for several years and having debilitating illness and you know it's unfortunately she and she'll tell you this that she's considers herself lucky um, that she got diagnosed and effective treatment. How many more Lisa Robertsons are there out there in Alberta? Um, you know, it's really hard to say. Um, there's not great st statistics. Unfortunately, um, a lot of cases are being missed by the testing in Canada. Um, and so people are going to other countries to get diagnosis, uh, like myself, who are then not counted in the statistics in Alberta or across Canada. I, I've heard it described as a flu that you don't recover from. Is that, is that your experience? Um, it certainly can be. Oftentimes, um, it'll start as a flu-like illness and that you just never seem to really recover from. And if it's not treated, if it's not recognized right away, and often it's not, about 50% of times um, patients don't recall a tick bite. And 50% of times um, doctors are looking for signs of a rash that just aren't happening. So people are kind of going undiagnosed um, for quite a long time, oftentimes. Okay, Alberta Health cites that, that only approximately 20% of ticks found in the 2013 Tick Passive Surveillance Program were believed to carry Lyme disease and that the risk of being bitten by a black-legged tick carrying the disease is quite low in Alberta. How, how do you respond to that? Um, I don't believe that risk is low. A 20% chance of a black-legged tick having Lyme disease I think is pretty high um, when you try to think of it on a personal level and think, geez, you know, if my kid goes out to play and comes back in with a black-legged tick bite and there's a 20% chance of that tick having uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, the uh, bacteria that causes Lyme disease, I think that's a really big risk. Um, and, you know, nobody wants that for, for anyone. Um, and you couple that with the 35% of cases that are getting missed on the ELISA test in Alberta, and it's alarming. If your child or you, anyone, is di uh, not diagnosed with the disease, they're not going to get treated for the disease. And every day they can get sicker. And as the, the more sick they get, the more complicated and complex uh, the disease is to treat. The ELISA test, that's, that's the screening test? The initial one? The, yes, the ELISA is the primary screen, screening tr test, uh, the first tier of the test that's used in Alberta. Okay, now... Um, yeah, it has... Yes, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, how, fa how far off the beaten path do you have to go to maybe encounter one of these ticks that, that could potentially be carrying Lyme disease? Um, you don't have to go very far off the path at all. Um, in fact, it can be in the city, it can be in our city parks, it can be in your backyard. Um, ticks have been proven to be carried by migratory birds. And you don't know when a tick bites you if, if, you're been in, if uh, that tick has Lyme disease. And it's um, closer than you might think. The risk is really real for Albertans. Uh, I really caution people to learn about Lyme disease and, and find out um, you know, the symptoms of the disease and how, um, be aware of how to properly remove ticks, etc. And then you really minimize your risk of contracting it. Okay, now the other side of the coin of this, this dialogue is, is, is that there is this appearance of conflict with the medical community over Lyme disease in Alberta. Why, why is that, Susan? Um, well, I think a lot of it um, is surrounded uh, uh, around the testing. Um, the testing has uh, been proven to, the ELISA test, has been proven to miss 35% of cases of culture-proven um, Lyme disease. And, and that's pretty alarming. Um, you know, Alberta Health will say that 2,500 ELISA tests um, were administered uh, in 2013 in Albertans, and 19 of those cases came back positive. But when you, you know that there's a 20% risk of a tick having Lyme disease, you know Lyme disease is in Alberta, and you couple that with the 35% chance of the ELISA test missing uh, your infection with Lyme disease, it, you know, a small tick 
um, grows into a very large problem. And it makes me question, and I know for certain that there's a lot of people um, that are going misdiagnosed in our country. Um, and how many people are getting missed by this? If, 20, if 19 cases were positive out of 2,500, um, that leaves, and, and the 35% risk of, um, or 35% chance, sorry, of the test missing it, that leaves upwards of 800 people walking around Alberta not knowing if they have Lyme disease. And it's creating a chronic form of the disease. Okay, so for, for those folks who, who have not been confirmed after being tested here in Alberta by Alberta's medical community, what are, what are their options if they feel they actually still do have Lyme disease? Um, oftentimes people go to the U.S., sometimes other countries. Um, there are a handful of uh, physicians and naturopaths that are treating in Alberta that are trained by the International Lyme and Associated Disease Society, and that's fantastic. But unfortunately, oftentimes, and this is the case for myself, is we're paying out of pocket. And, you know, and you, if you think too about the amount of tests that the average Lyme patient's going through before they get to diagnosis, it's often years before they get to diagnosis, um, it's causing great strain on our healthcare system. And how much money, Albertans need to ask, how much money is that costing our healthcare system for us to go through these battery of tests for years and years? And, you know, that in itself, that's a, a completely, um, kind of awful issue. Uh, Susan, very much appreciate your perspective this evening. Thank you kindly for joining us. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Have a great night. You as well. Susan McInnes is president of the Lyme Disease Association of Alberta. Welcome back to Alberta Primetime and our discussion on Lyme disease continues. We've heard from those raising questions and concerns and now it is the turn of Alberta's top doctor, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. James Talbot is here in studio. Dr. Talbot, good to see you. Good Welcome to see back. you too. All right, there's, there's a lot of controversy around Lyme disease in Alberta and whether or not the disease itself and the ticks that carry it actually exist here. Where do you stand on that? Do they exist? Well, they do. Um, one of the reasons that we have a surveillance program in place is that we know that the disease is spreading in terms of its range uh, because of global warming. We know that we have the mosquitoes that can carry the organism responsible, and we know that ticks are a vector. Uh, and so we've been working with our colleagues in agriculture to find ticks and to test them. We have a program we encourage people to send ticks in if they've found them on their pets and we have doctors sending in ticks that they find um, on, on patients and those are then tested for the organism that's responsible and we have had small numbers of those ticks test positive. In terms of humans though, all the cases that we have in Alberta so far have traveled to an area outside of Alberta that is known to have Lyme disease. So we don't have any clear-cut cases where they acquired it in Alberta. Okay, uh, according to the uh, Public Health Agency of, of Canada, the number of Lyme cases has quadrupled over the last five years with rates in 2013 reaching over 500 cases. They also mentioned these are only detected and actual uh, numbers are, are said to be much higher, how, how do we factor? How does Alberta factor into we have, those numbers? Uh, in the last year, we had about 20 cases. And as I said, each of the cases we've looked at have been from outside of Alberta. In the years previous to that, we had about 10 each year. So we are seeing an increase, but it, uh, it's not at the numbers that are, are they decided. Are they strictly coming from outside the province? Okay. Well, there's increasing amounts happening in Canada. So Manitoba didn't used to be uh, free of it and now has a significant number of cases. Nova Scotia, uh, BC has a small number of cases. Right now, Alberta and Saskatchewan, we haven't seen the same kind of movement, but that is why we're continuing to examine the ticks. Okay, how do we, how do we test patients for it? The test in Alberta and is the same as it is with the rest of Canada, and it's what's recommended by the CDC in, uh, in uh, the US. There's a screening test that's done, and then a further test that's done, a more advanced confirmatory test done by the Public Health Agency of Canada in Winnipeg. What if that, that first screening test does not show positive? 
So when we were first um, detecting Lyme disease in the northeastern United States 20 years ago, the tests weren't as good and they were occasionally negative uh, early on in the disease. That happens less often now, but physicians are aware that it can happen and so what you do is retest and eventually if you have Lyme disease you will be positive. Okay, now how, how do you respond to the, the claims by some uh, who, who feel patients are, are often being misdiagnosed or even being told it's all in your head? Well, we did 2,500 tests last year and uh, that's how we know about the 20 cases uh, from last year. So we, the test is available, it works. We, we have pretty fine physicians in the province who are aware of what the signs and symptoms look like and, and test appropriately. So we have everything we need to de detect cases in Alberta. And I have no doubt that as the tick continues to spread, we will eventually have cases that, that actually got the organism in Alberta. Where, where does someone turn if they feel they have been misdiagnosed? Uh, well, often I think uh, what people would do practically is get a second opinion. Um, and then if the case is you know, s significantly consistent with Lyme disease, it would be a referral to infectious disease docs. Most of the infectious disease docs in the province are very familiar with Lyme disease and they would, they would order that test. The family physician, if they thought the presentation was strong enough, would also order the test. Should they have to go south of the border to get that second opinion? Because we, we hear of, of cases of that. Right. So um, one of the things that's really important is that you need to get the test from a lab that's certified. And there are uh, labs in the United States that have been cited by the CDC for using incorrect testing procedures. And when that happens, you can get false positives. And so we've had a number of people who've tested in US labs as positive and who come back and who repeatedly test negative here in Alberta. So we suspect that's more a problem with the test in the US than it is a problem here. So how does Alberta acknowledge a, a positive test in the States? Do, do, does the province acknowledge it? We retest. So if, if you've been to the United States and you have a test that's positive and you come back to Alberta and you're convinced that you have Lyme disease, ordinarily the person would see the physician, the physician would order a second test. And we have a significant number of people who've done that and they test negative here. So it, uh, it's not uncommon if labs are not certified uh, to end up with what's known as false positive tests. The culture around the medical community in Alberta, how much has it evolved in, the, in most recent years in terms of embracing Lyme disease? Because we, we, we've heard in the past of, of how people have been turned away. So, but I, I hear from you, though, that there is, there is more of an embrace. Well, we, we communicate with physicians on a regular basis that this is a disease that we expect to be reported to us. It's, it's a reportable disease under the legislation. We've done extensive work with physicians for them to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms. The surveillance program uh, for accepting ticks from uh, humans uh, that doctors have uh, removed the ticks from it was expanded last year. Uh, and we communicate every year before the beginning of tick season uh, to uh, people who are going to be out, hikers, hunters, uh, the general public, and we also communicate to physicians that tick season is around again, remind them of the surveillance program, reminding, the, reminding them of the testing that's available, and re reminding that they're required to report tests to, to the province. Dr. Talbot, always a pleasure to speak with you, sir. Thank, thank you kindly for lending your perspective to this discussion. Thank you. Dr. James Talbot is Alberta's Chief Medical Officer of Health.